The race to get the first truly autonomous vehicle on the road is on, but not everyone is on board. Axios reports President Trump has privately said he doesn't trust autonomous cars, calls them crazy. Joining us now uh, to discuss, Professor Amnon Shashua, President and CEO of Mobileye, Senior Vice President at Intel as well. So let, let's just take it from the top. Um, not a lot of people know perhaps what Mobileye does. Uh, you guys were acquired for uh, $15 billion a couple of years ago by Intel, so a very large company. Um, can you just kind of explain from the top level where Mobileye sits in the autonomous vehicle stack as it stands kind of right now? Well, one should look at things as a spectrum, going from driving assist, you know, the, these systems that prevent you from you know, colliding to, in, mm -hmm. to other vehicles, up to autonomous uh, driving. And uh, Mobileye is active in the entire spectrum. Now, we have shipped close to 40 million chips. It means 40 million cars are using our technology for driving assist. Mm -hmm. And we are on our way to uh, commercializing mobility as a service, first with Volkswagen in Tel Aviv 2022, building a full stack self-driving system and handling the entire vertical integration to offer a ride hailing, commercial ride hailing. Uh, self-driving. Mm -hmm. So th this entire spectrum is, is what we do. So you guys are talking, you know, two and a half, three year timeline until we're going to have people calling for a car, getting in a car that is controlled by um, your chips. And, and I think a lot of uh, the discussion that we have is, is where does this go for consumers? You know, if I'm buying a car, how close am I to having a car that's going to drive itself uh, exclusively or for long lengths of time? And um, from where you guys sit, how much uh, has changed just in the last five years in that space? How close are we to really mass adoption of consumers being able to get behind the wheel of a car that can really do most of the driving itself? Well, again, I'll separate the, the evolution of driving assist, mm -hmm. where semi-autonomous driving is, is part of the evolution. And, and, and that is, is progressing. You know, the ACC, Adaptive Cruise Control, is progressing to a hands-free driving in limited situation. Uh, you have like the GM Super Cruise that has a camera that's monitoring the, driving, the driver and in certain situations allows you to have hands off on certain, certain roads. So that, that has its own evolution. But truly autonomous driving, what is called level four or, or level five, I believe will come in two generations. The first generation will be focused only on robot taxi, only on ride hailing, because the, the sensitivity for cost is not that high. You can have a system that will cost tens of thousands of dollars on top of the cost of the car mm -hmm. and still make a ride hailing business uh, flourish. Once that matures and the prices can go down, that can take a decade. Then That's we're it. talking about systems of few thousands of dollars, then you can start this proliferating to passenger cars. At this time, I mean, so we're not that far off from seeing some of these cars on the road, but there's still a lot of critics out there, or skeptics, I should say, President Trump reportedly calling this mm -hmm. whole idea crazy. And then AAA was out with a recent report saying that about 70% of U.S. drivers will be afraid to ride, to ride in a self-driving vehicle. How do you address some of these fears out there? How do you appeal to Main Street, these people that simply say that they won't get in these types of cars right now? I think the fears are, are, are in order. That means one of the biggest challenges that, that we have as, as technology providers is to build a system that will balance correctly safety versus usefulness. How do you go, because a self-driving car should never make a decision that will cause an accident, mm. period. You know, you, you, society will not tolerate anything, anything else. So how, how, do you, how do you balance that with being careful, with being too conservative? If you are too conservative, you'll block traffic and then it'll become useless. Mm -hmm. this, this delicate balance is, is something that requires significant uh, transparency, uh, significant uh, formal modeling, on, and significant work with regulatory bodies in order to standardize a set of rules that will first be transparent to society and second will enable to balance its usefulness versus, uh, versus safety. And this is what we have been doing for the past year and a half. We uh, wrote an academic paper which we called RSS which formalizes the common sense of human driving and, uh, and, and guarantees that from a decision making point of view a, a robot taxi will never make a decision that will cause an accident. And we're working with regulatory bodies around the, around the world, in China and in Israel mm -hmm. and U.S. and in Europe to start working on, on standardization of these rules. And so, once it's transparent, 
I think society would, would be on board. So I guess it sounds like you kind of accept the notion that uh, the standards will just be higher for a self-driving car than they are for a human-operated car, right? We know that uh, millions of people every year die in car accidents or severely injured in car accidents. Uh, we all have accepted that broadly, but, um, you know, even if self-driving cars are far safer, uh, you're aware that I think people's conservative, protective notions may call for a, a higher burden of proof there. You must have a high, higher burden of proof because with human drivers, society doesn't have a choice. Right. Now, we must allow people to, to drive. But with the robotic cars, we have a choice. We can simply say we, we, we do not allow them to be on the road. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the burden of proof must be much higher. The guarantees must be much higher. We cannot have a mediocre driver on the road that gradually will improve like we have with humans. We have to have a, a system who has, that has been validated. Uh, regulatory bodies should be on the same page in terms of standardizing uh, the rules around it. See, for example, one of the reasons that we are starting our first commercial deployment, again, it's together with Volkswagen in Israel, because in Israel we're having, there is a task force, a regulatory task force involving several government uh, agencies working on standardizing those rules mm -hmm. that will enable to put a autonomous car on the road under the kind of guidelines that I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. uh, really exciting stuff. I uh, hope you come back sometime soon. Let us know how it's going. Uh, Professor Amnon Shashua, CEO of Mobileye, thanks for stopping by. Thank you.